Today we're going to be working on a rare, over 60 year old switcher locomotive from a company you've probably never ever heard of. This here's an SW600, at least that's what it was marketed as. It's made by a company called Lindberg. They only made a few locomotives, but they made a whole bunch of rolling stock from back in the uh, early 60s. Now some of you 33 percenters out there are sitting there going, hey, what happened to the GS4 video? The Bachman, the, the Daylight Special, you said you were gonna do. Well, it was under production. It was, it was green lit. The crew was here. We were going to town on it and something happened. Something happened bad. I really, I really don't want to, I don't want to spoil it, okay? All right, I'll tell you. We were putting some Shapeway gears in it, and they broke. They broke immediately. 100% failure rate on this is what I'm saying. We had to stop production. We got the legal team out there. There's emails going on. Got a hold of the original developer of the gear, and we are waiting for responses. So we had to call the whole crew back in and fire up a whole nother production. This just happened to fall in my lap today. This was sent in by Clive Griffey out of Washington. Washington? Washington. Washington. Had a great letter in it. I love stuff like this. Loves my channel. Yeah, yeah. He says he's sending me a challenge to look at. He wants me to make a video on this one because he's got another one that he wants to have fixed. So he donated this to the channel. And then, you know, he baited me. He said, here, fix this, and then he'll learn how to fix this. You know, you're not going to run across one of these just on your own. That's my kind of guy out there, I tell you. He knows exactly how to get my attention. Let's get this over on the workbench. Let's get a close look at it, see what it's all about. Let's tune this old Lindbergh up. Well, here's what the old girl looks like. The old Chicago Northwestern 4567. This is the original paint on it. It has not been repainted. Some handrail damage. It's missing one up over here. This The front coupler got broke off in shipping because it was wrapped too tight. You gotta be careful when you ship stuff. When you put it in bubble wrap, you don't have to, you don't have to tape it up like it's a, a kilo of, you know, like you see on the movies. Padding, padding, right? I like to roll around this way, leave the ends out, fold them nice and loose. So that, that way there's a little bit of room in there. I get stuff, more stuff delivered and then they break the couplings off because it, it was just wrapped like a, I don't know, like a, like a swaddled baby. Look at this. It's got a belt drive. It's got a spring belt drive on it. Holy moly. Yeah, all brass wheels. See these little fellers down in there. I wonder if it runs. We should throw it on the track and see what happens. Oh, oh, wait. Yeah, that's what it do. Well, this little fella seems to work just, oh, she's got a little, she's got a little gallop to her giddy right there. Oh, oh, but that's cleaned up. Well, that's not bad. Two and a half volts. There's nothing wrong with this, 60 years old. Well, oh, it needs just a little maintenance. Sure, we're gonna bring this thing right, right back around. To get this body off, there's no visible screws on it anywhere, but you can see that there's some locks that are hanging out underneath here. So you just give the body, the, this long hood, you give it a squeeze here, here, and that hood, she'll come right off. Then this cab, it's got a tab back here, so I'm just gonna push in, that rocks it forward some, and then you get a fight, fight it coming out. This one over here, it likes to hang up some. Just enough to make you nervous, like it's gonna break. Come on, little buddy. There it is. Got some paint missing from up in here. Kind of dirty a little, look at this. Look at that dream boat. That is one hell of a gear reduction on there. Oh shoot, now I've done it. Slipped out of my hand and these dang hand railings, they just came right off. That's a downside. You notice what makes this the biggest downside? To show it up, this guy over here was broken off. Paul Lindbergh established his namesake company back in the 1930s and mainly focused on model ships, airplanes, and cars. In 1962 is when he hopped aboard the old let's build some model trains game. He focused at HO, and the only HO locomotive that they ever put out 
was this EMD, what they marketed as an SW600. Now you guys out there, they got the sharp peepers that, that can tell by looking at stuff. You know this isn't an SW600. It looks more like an SW1. Now we all know that, that the, the guys in the engineering department at the model train manufacturers have done this before in the past. Lindbergh chose to model this locomotive in a, a DuPont plastic named Delrin. Even though the rest of the cars, all the rolling stock was just in molded plastic. High pressure, pff, squirt it in the mold, pull it out. Now DuPont's Delrin, which is now called Celcon M90, it, it's got a lot of slickery to it, you know, all on its own. But the downside about it is that it cannot be glued with traditional glues or solvents that are used in the modeling industry. You know, what we have around the... CA glue is not going to work is what I'm trying to say. You Google it and you can find websites out there. The guys say that they've done this or they've done that. They've used other different chemicals. And then you can find chat rooms and there's guys saying you can't glue that for nothing. I, you know, the internet for you, huh? That's where, yeah. Another thing about it, the paint. The plastic doesn't, it doesn't hold paint to it very well. You got to use an extra adhesive promoting chemicals, things, pretreatments on it to get the paint to stick. You notice in this model, either if you haven't yet, you'll notice later on that a lot of the paint has flaked off on the chassis. And the more I ended up working on it, the more that paint kept flaking off. Even some flaked off on the body. The paint that came from the factory, it is not bonded on, is like what you would normally expect. HOTrainCollector.com, they've got a great online write-up about the Lindbergh line. You can read it for free. And then those of you that are lucky enough to have the, the premiere issue of HO Collector Spring of 2017, there is a 12-page spread article that they that tony cook put together that talks about all kinds of stuff about this rare manufacturer Lindbergh. who whoever even heard about him hoseeker.net also has an extensive amount of information on the Lindbergh line i found these on this particular switcher the original instructions how to assemble the thing how to maintain it how to do this and that to it illustrated parts breakdowns all the literature that a guy could ever want that that tony cook he i wonder if he'd have a beer with me i, I wonder if he'll i wonder if he'll take my phone call we're getting back into it like you see it's got pickups here's a you know the red wire here there's a red wire under here and you flip this around so this thing is a eight wheel pickup four wheel drive and it's got a flywheel on it right over here 1962 it's got a flywheel on it holy moly i'm going to want to get these wires desoldered out of here we got two wires that are going up to the headlight now this dry, big drive line right here it just pops out here is a bushing right there that's the rear one this spring belt right here we're going to come in here with a pick get up under it like this get it off of there yeah look at this well if these wires aren't weren't hooked up and they're not going to be here in a second all of those are twisted together jeez at least it's hard to get the trucks out they kind of screwed us here so we need to get these all taken apart twisted them together and then soldered them there's some here comes another get that light out this front truck is just going to drop out the bottom it's being held in by that spring look at this look at that i absolutely love it this weight what's it doing is it gonna come off no because they switched it over right there buggers who does that let's take this rear truck out it's just got a screw right here do not want to lose these it's a little tough to order up parts for this one you know this motor's got four small regular screws holding her in right in here one two three and four Oh, really didn't want that to happen. So by doing that, it allowed our brushes to fall out. Square brushes. I kind of thought the motor was going to come out of there as an assembly. We need to get the brush holder off. That's this one right here in the center. Oh, man. What's that brush holder screw look like? Same as those right there. Pieces, parts all over the place. Try to grease in there. Going after one of my paint trays here. So we can keep stuff. This is how you sort of remember it. You put it in subgroups. 
This is the brushes and gack that came out with that. Brush holders, springs. These four here go to the top of the motor. Here's the top of the motor. It just, anything a guy can do to make it a little easier on himself. I wanna get the motor out, but I know it ain't going anywhere. See, there's a, there's a magnet down under in here, and there's a lot of metal shavings that it's picked up. So I wanna get that out, I wanna get the metal shavings out. Can I push on this hole right here and push that, yep, push that magnet assembly up? There we go. There is the frame. Right here is the front driveline bushing. Rear driveline bushing seems to be about the same. Here is our motor. This magnet in here, I'm gonna put a B on this or an R for rear. I'm gonna put an F over here for front. So that way I don't put it in backwards and then it runs different directions for the polarity. Three, four, five, six. What? Oh no, it's just a three pole. Bushing right in there. Bushing right down in here. I don't see any thrust washers, you bastards. This is prepped though and ready for a little gentle scrubbing, the toothbrush, and some Dawn dish soap. Clean these bodies up, get them drying. This front truck here, these axles will pop out of the side frames very gently. Open up the side frames. Come on now. Pull the wheel out. Pull the wheel out. I love the way this is designed. This belt is actually woven together. It's it's twisted. It's a it's a big long spring. And I believe right in this area here, it's got it's just you take it and you just screw it into itself some. See that? And that's how the belt comes out. You can see how they've just spread it out just a little bit right here on this end and this end. You know that drive belt that's in there? It used to be really common to get a hold of back in the days. But now you're like, well, where does a guy get something like that if you if you need a drive belt? It's an oddity. I'll tell you this, they're inside of every single oil seal, an axle wheel seal. Cars, here's a couple pictures I found on the internet. The reason I know this is because as a mechanic, we're always replacing wheel seals. If you go to a heavy truck shop or the, the local mechanic down the road, there's a chance that they're gonna have some wheel seals in their garbage can that they'll give to you. Fish that little spring out of there, Take it home, rebuild your belt drive stuff for free. Let's get back to it. Well, we're gonna clean these wheels up with some mineral spirits here on the ends with some Q-tips. Take the fiberglass pencil and we're gonna shine these, shine these up. You gotta make sure you clean the ends right here also because that's where the juices are flowing through at. These trucks are sold as an assembly and they can't be taken apart because I don't see, they, they don't have a separate part number on the illustrated parts breakdown. Right here you can see the wipers. Sitting Here's one sitting here, one sitting here, and then these wires are soldered to that. So you got to make sure to clean these ends up where the wheels are at. Lots of cleaning, making sure all the juices get to flowing like we want them to. Don't take it apart any farther than this right here. These hand railings, most of them were being held on by one or two little pins that were left on this. Since this is made by made out of Delrin, to glue it is impossible. It can be done, but boy, it takes a special paint to do it. They're a little thick for prototypical use. 33 thousandths of an inch thick, my goodness. Or we can go to the metric route. 84 millimeters, big. So I'm gonna trim all these off. And then the hand railings are even molded into the side over here. You can see it coming down just right there. This stuff is, it's kind of soft, but it just doesn't glue up with normal CA or epoxy or Gorilla Glue or anything like that. So I'm gonna cut those details out of the pipe coming down the frame. Now they also say you can't paint it. Well, this paint is, it's hammered, it's fallen off. So I'm just gonna give her the old college try. I got some semi-gloss, hunter green, the cap and the, the body, they almost match up. So I'm gonna cut those details off. I'm gonna get my pin drill out with the appropriate size. Drill me some fresh holes of some hand railing material I've got laying around here. And I'm gonna fabricate up some hand railings for it. That are They won't look exactly like those, but it's better than having the hand railings all falling off and looping around and maybe some CA glue if the hole's already there. I stick the hand railing in, it might hold it to bond it. You know, I mean, there's, there's nothing much more a guy can do is what I'm trying to say. It's it's either this, having hand railings flopping around and breaking off every time you look at it really hard, or trying to fab up something new. 
Del Delrin, why would they do that? They wanted to be ahead of the curve, I guess. See, somebody's got some CA that they've put all over this, and it ain't, it, you know, it's making it look funny. So let's just see what we can do. It can't hurt, right? Here's all of our components after being cleaned up. Now I put the trucks and the wheels and the, and the I didn't, the shaft here and stuff, as much as I could in the ultrasonic cleaner. Don't put things that are painted in there because it will strip the paint off. Just put these under so soap and water with a toothbrush, clean them right up into shape. Our motor wasn't really too bad. Uh, Q-tips, mineral spirits in here. You can get your fiberglass pencil. Come in here to clean up the commutator, yeah. This frame had all that paint problem going on on it. This paint cap completely lied to me. The paint cap's the exact color I want, and what came out was a little bit, little bit brighter. Dang it. Filed off all the original handrails, sat her with a drill bit the size of three human hairs, and I drilled new holes in the chassis so I could put my new handrailings that I'm gonna make for it in. Let's get this running though, get this stuff out of the way. Now I ordered these things up right here. These are rare earth, extra juicy, powerful super magnets. They came from Micromark, 10 to, a, to an order. I went ahead and ordered 20 of them. Right here's the original magnet that was in it. And oddly enough, the stator magnets, one of them was put on right over the top of this, but it looks like a piece of tape. And I thought, well, that's weird. Cause you know, that would reduce the the magnetism of it, he, you know, here, not real powerful. Here's the super magnets. Could get off, it, it's like a, uh, holy moly. And did I have a problem getting these things working with them? Holy, the distance between what this was in there and this is in there is 32nd of an inch. It's, it's just a little bit wider, but I did jam it down inside here where the, where the, where this assembly went and it fit. So I'm going to run with it. These traction wheels, they had a traction tire on them and it was old and crusty. And when it went in the ultrasonic cleaner, when it came out, it was gone. It was just, it was no longer there. So I used this to clean up all these surfaces, clean up around here at a real slow speed. Just, I want everything to be as shiny and as clean as possible so we got good juices. Here you can see these pickups on the outside of these wheels. So I came in here with this, touched them up a little bit, came in with the fiberglass pencil and spun it around in that divot. So I want good juices flowing. The wheels that go on the traction truck, which has got this weird bell on it right here, they're gonna have the traction tires installed. Now the unpowered truck, it doesn't have any traction tires because it's not powered. So there's no grooves cut in this. I'm gonna use some of this premium conductive carbon grease. You get this from the Amazon. Don't get it all over yourself. It just, it tracks everywhere. Worse than a, than a two year old. Little, little dot down inside of this dimple in there. It's brass tarnishes over time. So I just want something to prevent the tarnish from coming back. I don't run, I won't run this very much. So as it sits and the seasons come and go, it's just gonna make a mess. These guys will pop right in, get one divot started. Get it there, see, yep, cake, uh-huh. I'm loving it. Let's work on jamming this motor in there. It's gonna sit in like this. It's got a place for these bushings to ride right here. So make sure you get all those lined up. But we gotta put it in at the same time we put this little feller right here in. This should be interesting with these new fancy magnets in here. Gotta get everything lined up. It's all gotta go in straight all at the same time. It's an odd setup, I completely admit. Very weird. The magnets keep pulling this armature up towards into the walls here. We got to get it captured down in there. Want to get these bearings looped up here a little bit because I have not done that at all yet. Get these four cover screws put back in and it's trying to be as big a pill as possible. When I was trying to bolt this cover on, there was a gap 
going on between here and here. Took it back off and I realized that the motor bushings, they're square and I had it cocked in there a little bit so it wouldn't allow this cover to go on all the way. So make sure you get the bushings timed where the square parts are in and then you got no gaps in between here. So when it's all said and done, we got this motor spinning nice and freely. Something to keep an eye on. Brush holders, brushes, brush holder. That's the top keeper and this. Brushes are gonna go in this little square right here. And if you really take a close look at them, you'll see that one end is going to be partially rounded right there. That's how you know which way to put it back together. It's broken already. Hold that brush in while I fart with this one. Yeah, this is my first time, fellas, you know. I ain't never seen one of these before. <laughs> Everything fell apart. There's a groove in there. This right here is gonna go in. It's gonna fight you all the way. Very interesting design. So you gotta push these, they gotta be pushed out, which puts spring pressure in, which pushes the brushes in. And then you gotta fight to get this keeper down inside that little hole right there. It's one of those six hand, and I drop it on the ground and I lose everything. Okay, now we fought and we've got the brushes and this top thing in. And now we'll try to get the screw in that holds the brush keeper in. Holding everything, 13 hands. So far looking good. And there's little grooves on that brush keeper that go forward into here. You can see there's the brush being captured right under there. And right under there. If we've done all of our prep work right, we should have a running motor. Still just as noisy. God, 30%, 60%. Strange how it could be so dang noisy. Get our front truck put into place. Jam these wires through. Okay. Wires are gonna come up through these right there. Just a lot going on on this thing. We'll throw out our sp spring through. Goes through here and then through here. We gotta get it in the guides. There. And we're gonna screw this together. That's what I'm looking for. Back to the conductive grease. We're gonna, oh wait, we gotta get some. Order these off the eBay. These Kalamut trains. See, these are the diesel O-rings, number 505. Let's see if they're gonna fit. Me and you, we're gonna go through this together at the exact same time. Stretch it. Come on, in it. Oh, oh, I thought I shot that right in the air. I'll be. They fit like a glove. They look thick. I'm quite happy with that. Finally, something, some worked out. One little feller. Stretch him out. Get the bottom on. Hold it with your finger. Roll it around to the top. Get your tool out of there. It's got a rink. It's got a roll. So we just work the roll out of it. Yeah, I'd buy that. Go into our carbon conductive grease again little dot down in each side of one of these little wheel pivots that are in here. How much? Doesn't take much. Throw that away. So I'll have this stuff. See, I've already got it all over me. Put one wheel on the outside and you can pry it in gently. Gently. Yep. Now my traction tires on this side over here. So we're going to put our other traction tire on the other side. So that way, you know, this wheel will be picking up and this wheel will be picking up. Getting super close. Here's our bushings for the drive line. They only go in. This end's pointed. This end isn't. This is going to sit like that. So we'll put the right one in the right one. The non-pointed one goes here. The pointed one's going to end up being over here. We're going to get just a little bit of juice, this little grease. Just some right here at the end. We're going to use a pick and we're going to pick Get this spring, make sure there's no twist in it. I mean, well, there's gonna be a twist in it eventually. Pull it up, get it on the device, get it in the pulley groove, get this in back there. Yeah, I mean, this thing is just coming together. A Little bit of grease right there. Get this bushing in. They had all these wires ah, twisted together. Capture the two, capture the third. Oh, jeez. Yeah, we'll tin this set all together. Get a little solder up here on top. Do the exact same to the other side. We'll get these wires taped up out of the way so they're not gonna hang up on nothing. I noticed from the analytics there on the YouTube 
that the majority of the people that watch my channel, they watch it from their, their television instead of on a computer or the phone. Televisions are a little more difficult to interact with than a, than a computer would. I just wanted to show you guys, well, I, apparently we need them thumbs up. That tells the, the thing at the YouTube, hey, guys like this, and then they advertise it to more people and then more people have the ability to find it. I just wanna go over how you kinda go about showing how you get to the like button and, and subscribe button on a television. So once you click into the video, you go like, oh, yep, there, I'm gonna watch this one. So once your video, you know, wherever you're at in your video, you hit the pause button, and then you hit your up button. And that'll highlight the individual video that you're on. And then you can roll over here to give it a thumb up. It's important though, because you gotta be signed in. Don't, don't do that. That's just silly. If you don't like it, just leave. If you want to subscribe to it, click on the channel. They, I mean, they make you do a lot of stuff. And then you come down over here to the subscribe. I'm already subscribed, so I can't subscribe it, but that's how you go about doing it. And you know, if you want to watch other videos that I've got you into the channel, you go to the channel and then it's just got everything in here that you can ever dream of ever wanting to watch right there. Click it through. So I'm just showing this because some guys just might not know. Just trying to make a public service announcement to help you help me ultimately end up helping you, you know, in the long run. <laughs> hey, that little switcher, it's almost, it's almost ready to run. Let's get back into it. We got our wires all soldered up out of the way of the drive line. These will curl in when we get the hood on it. Let's take it over there and take a little eyeball. See how she's gonna work. Well, I put her over on the track and I was gonna, just gonna twist the knuckle a little bit, you know. And the thing moved about two inches and my belt opened up. So I had to redo the belt. Turns out my little twisting method didn't work very well. And what I had to do was make a hook. You know, the spring is wound and you had to bend it down till you had a hook at the end. And then the other one, you hook it and then you close it and you crimp it and I just about went blind doing that, if you can see that right there. And then when I was fishing the damn belt back up, because you got to make one of these out of a paper clip and you dip down in there real deep and you hook it and then you pull it up, I knocked the wire off my headlight, that 400 year old, well, not really 400, you know what I mean. I mean, it, it, right, at the, right at the end. So I have got these grains of wheat. We're gonna replace that. We got, I mean, we're this deep. This might as well go ahead and get everything going like it's supposed to. Give it a fresh lease on life. I think this is gonna work. Who's my buddy? Who's my pal? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna solder that in. Then we're gonna test her out again. Oh, yeah. Doesn't have the herky jerky going on anymore. We're pulling about two volts. Wow. Those magnets really, f it's creep speed is just off the chart. I mean, I'm doing like one volt now. Them, them magnets, pow, they brought this thing back to life like you would not believe. Look at this right here, and it's still going. So yeah, if it wasn't for the dang, that dang belt drive, boy, this would be what a hell of a little feller. I guess we need to get that body put on it right now and work on them handrails and some coupling. Well, I've got enough stanchions here. I should have the right size to do what I need to do to make up some custom handrails for this thing. I'll probably do this all off camera because I've I've made custom handrail videos before. Watching it happen is not a real, it's not a real edge of the cedar, you know. We'll come back when we've got handrails and the body on it and see what she looks like. So to throw some Katie's on these things, we're gonna start off with the 242 universal gearboxes and some 148 standard whisker couplers. I got them sitting right here. The gearboxes, they're, they're box. And really all I want is this, this shim part right here because it holds this coupler from flapping in the wind. So what I did is I took a gearbox and I cut the box off. So I've just got like the lid. So I got that part. And what we are gonna do, this is gonna go down flat. We're gonna put the, the KD, the box, and then you gotta hold all this together because gravity. The original screw that was in the original box on the original locomotive 
and I'm going to get it started in the original hole and it's going to uh, screw in into its original depth and we got Katie's on this thing front and back yump it turns out when you solder your wires on for the motor you need to put them on the side of the brushes I put them on the top and that made it where the hood wouldn't fit so put them over here on the sides. I guess if I would have paid attention when I took it apart, I would have seen that and it would have been just fine. She was just hanging up just enough where it just didn't look right. Something was going on. A lot of things still keep kind of going on. Very tight in here. I keep thinking that we got the push it on, push it on, get the slots to line up there. One more, yes, yes. Hand railings in. Did everything wrong and painted them after I installed them. Couplers on. They're functioning, doing what they're supposed to. Things running, electrical's working. Time to put her on the track and take them, put our peepers on it. Yeah, came out real nice. Very nice, smooth little runner. Yeah, loving it. It's weird that one of the best creeping locomotives that I got is from 1962. Unbelievable. I'm Ron with Classic Model Trains. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.